Welcome to Simple Watercolors. I'm Nan Hankey, and today we're going to paint a dragonfly. Well, we're going to paint it and we're going to ink it. This is a simple drawing of a dragonfly that I did just to get the basic shapes across there. It has a head with great big eyes, uh, main abdomen or thorax, I think might be the word. Little section after that, and then a long skinny tail that comes in pieces. Two beautiful wings and six legs. Uh, I want to draw it a little bit bigger than this. I want to end up, this is a four by six piece of paper. I want to end up with a five by seven, so about this big. And what I've learned is I need to start with dragonflies bigger because I have a tendency to start drawing them and run out of paper, and then all of a sudden you have a painting that looks like that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is put it on the bigger paper, and then when I'm finished, I can come in with a five by seven mat and choose exactly how I want to trim it down to the five by seven size. Here's an example of one that I just painted earlier as a test, and as you can see, his wings fell off the end of the page. You saw the beautiful yellow and green spatter background on that one. We're gonna start with that but we have to protect some space for the dragonfly himself. So I repeated part of the drawing on a piece of scratch paper here. It's just the middle section, the tail, the body, and the head. I didn't draw the head wide enough for the first time, so I had to redraw it. Um, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is cut that out of a piece of scrap watercolor paper or something um, fairly heavy and, and stiff, perhaps a light cardboard would work. I have the one that I cut out to do my previous one, so I'm going to use that again. You can see it's already spattered full of color. I put some teeny weeny little pieces of tape curled up behind it to hold it down. It doesn't matter if it bounces up a little bit on the ends. We don't want to have hard edges here. We just want to have somewhat reserved area for the body. Now there's several ways to do the spatter. You can do it um, with some water first and then ink on top of that, which will make a very smooth uh, movement of the color. You can do it with a spray bottle filled with water onto either the wet or a dry background. There's special, what they call dot spray bottles that will give you some nice dots. Um, you can use a traditional spray pot bottle, which will give you a fine mist and uh, the other thing you can do is add either water or alcohol after you've put the color on in order to give it some texture. So I never quite know what's gonna happen when I start doing this. So now that I've told you things that might happen, we're gonna jump in and do it. Oh, and if you don't have spray bottles, you can use an old toothbrush, put some paint on it, and flick it with your finger or with a knife uh, I do recommend practicing that a little bit on another piece of paper um, just to kind of get the hang of it so that when you do start doing it, the spatters will go more or less where you want them to go. They're, it's kind of an uncontrolled process anyhow. I'm going to do some pre-wetting of the paper with a fine mist water spray. Just kind of across the middle there and a little bit on that top. And I don't know where that blue came from, but that's okay. It's part of the design now. And as a matter of fact, we'll, we'll do just a smidge of blue up there. See, this is a dot spray bottle. It gives dots. Can you see the difference between where it hit water and spread out and where it hit dry paper? Um, we're going to want a look of some yellow flowers that this bug is flying in and among. So we're going to do that. I got a little heavier than I like there, but you know what? We'll come in with some green, and this time I'm going to really try and make it dots because I like, I like my green to be dots. You have to just barely tap the thing. Okay, now that's not filled in all the way on the way you, when you saw before was, but we can do some things. We can add a little bit more of the fine water mist. We'll spread them out a bit. And my water's starting to curve up, so I'm 
paper's starting to curl up, so I'm going to hold it down with my finger. I could have prevented that by doing a fine mist on the back of the paper first. Too bad I didn't think of that. Um, and then where, where the color's all running together, we can spray alcohol, which will do some interesting things to it like that. Kind of shooshes it out a bit. And of course, we can come back in and put other colors on top again. Maybe a little bit more yellow here and here. I want the impression that this fellow's flying around in sort of a garden with yellow flowers and that you're focused on the bug so you can't really see the flowers. Let's try a little more alcohol on these places where it seems to have puddled quite a bit. Alcohol sort of pushes it around. Okay, some of it's running off the edge of the page, so if you're someplace where you have to stay neat, you might want to dab that up. You may also want to dab at any place that looks like it's leaving a puddle because, of course, uh, we're not trying to get intense color here, and we are also not wanting to wait forever for this to dry. So I'm actually going to do quite a bit of dabbing because I'm kind of liking the way that looks. So any place that's very dark or very wet looking, I'm dabbing, and that will help it to dry faster. So there's some nice color in there, nice background, interesting background. Dry it near the near the piece that I put on to mask the area for the bug, so that that will dry. Okay, now I'm going to put up a little paint drying sign, and through the magic of the internet, I'll come back in a moment and it will be dry. Okay, my paint has been drying for about five minutes. You may wish to turn your video off and let yours dry for a while. It's not completely dry. When I pick up the paper and feel it, there's still a coolness to it, which means it's, it's not completely dry, but it is dry enough to start drawing on. I'm gonna start by carefully taking off my little piece that masked off the bug area. There we go. As you can see, a little bit of it messed up back here, but you know what? That's okay. We like happy accidents, as Bob Ross says, in watercolor. Makes it fun. We're gonna start by drawing, and I'm just gonna take a gray watercolor pencil. I draw in watercolor pencil. Uh, I'm afraid it's a little hard for y'all to see, but I like it because it disappears when I start when I start painting, but some, some of it you should be able to see pretty good. I'm gonna start with the eyeballs. Circles, great big circles in the head here. Then there's kind of a nose piece that is a triangle that fills in the rest of that. Down the main part of the body here, it's almost like shields of armor, the two plates there and then some smaller plates going the other direction, little boxes all the way down through this section where the body starts to thin out a little bit. And I'm thinking I made the body a little narrow. I'm gonna to have to make it a little bit bigger when I paint it, but that's okay. Um, the wings are a difficult part. So the entire length of your bug which measuring with my pencil is this long, is shorter than the wingspan. So I'm going to make the wingspan my entire pencil length. So about like that. And the front wings will start up here at what I would call the neck. A little mark here and a little mark here. And they come out in two this is really not showing, is it? Two loops there. Maybe I have to just go ahead and draw it in pen for you because we're gonna end up doing it in pen later anyhow. We'll see how the how the pen does on the thing here. 
actually going to keep my pencil as a, a measurement tool. So the wings need to be about that long. So it comes out kind of like the top of a heart in two bits. We'll always do one side and then the other side so we make them as much like each other as possible. Then from fairly close to that, it comes down. It's going to get widest about here before about kind of the bottom of the heart thing. And then go up. Didn't get the end of that one very good. But you know what? Because we're going to do so much inking, I can fix that. We'll just ignore that little line for now. Now I have to try and do the same thing here that comes down about the same amount. Down and back up. And this one could be a little higher there, maybe. Hard to say. And they don't look very much the same, do they? Let's give this one a little more curl here. As I said, even though it's ink, we'll be able to handle that because we're going to do so much fine inking within the wings. Now, the lower wing starts from a little farther down, and it starts out tracking with that first one and then all of a sudden it goes off on its own. And the lower wings are actually a little bit bigger, so the, the bottom part starts here and swings away from the body. And that's coming out about the same size as the first one. That, that doesn't matter too much, but you, you can make it bigger if you can. This is the important line here. Get it to swing away from the body and then out. Now, the legs will add later with the ink. The details of the um, tail, we're, we're gonna just paint it now and we'll ink it later. But getting those, getting those wings kind of established where they're gonna be was an important place to start. So what are we gonna paint first? I need a paintbrush, I need some water, I need some color. Uh, and we're going to start with those eyes because my eyes are one of the favorite parts of these critters. I'm going with a lovely teal. It's called cobalt teal blue and I use it painting oceans a lot. But these babies have some serious bright teal blue eyes. So maybe that whole circle that way will add a, a black I don't know if it's really an iris or not, but it looks like an iris to it later, a pupil, and we'll also add a little highlight to it later. You may want to dab in a little extra pigment there if it's been going with too much water, not enough pigment. And it's okay if the pigment kind of stays in some places. Okay, clean your brush real good. You always do that between moving from one color to another, dab it off on a paper towel or an old sponge or something. This is a dragonfly called a blue darning needle. So there's a lot of blues in him. I'm gonna use a cobalt blue, which is just a straight blue blue kind of a blue uh, in order to do his armor pieces here and some of the rest of his body. So we said there were small rectangles down here and then some bigger ones going this direction up here. I'm going to worry about the background color on the rest of his body later. Once again, we can add more pigment there if it looks like it's kind of light. And do they have to be perfect rectangles? No. Very few things in nature are actually perfect. Now the tail, I'm going to start a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add some more water here. Grab some of these little bits that are on the side to go light with it. And I'm gonna keep going right over that little mistake with the yellow there. Maybe I'll even scrub at that a little bit so that it melts in and just makes it sort of a green section of tail. And then go all the way up there. Now, the dragonflies I've been looking at, photographs online, get darker towards the back. So I'm gonna add more pigment on the end of the tail here especially on the very end. That looks good. 
Now his little nose was kind of a, a, a blue-green also. I may just use another blue because it's close to so much green it's going to get lost if I put green in there. And you don't want to touch those eyes because they're not dry yet, but you can put a tiny little triangle in between them that just doesn't touch either one. Now, the wings are see-through. You can leave them just the way they are, so you're seeing the flowers and the greenery and things through it. Or you could decide to give them a little bit of a hazy blue color. And I'm thinking I'll use this same color here. It's called a cerulean blue or a sky blue. But very, very lightly, just to give a little color to those wings, uh, especially in the places where there's no nothing behind them, where there's white behind them. And once again, very imperfect to just throw in some color in here. It's really the ink that's going to make this piece of art look very precise. There we go. Now I'm going to feel with my finger, are these sections dry enough to add to? Not quite yet, but we are going to try something with the eyes. Uh, since I want them to have a three-dimensional look to them, I'm going to try and lift out part. Let me see how dry they are. They're, they're sort of halfway dry, which is probably good enough. So I'm going to have a little dabber in my hand, and I'm going to say the light is coming from over here somewhere. So on these three-dimensional objects that are his eyes, it would cause a little dot of lightness on that side of both of them. That will, that will be good. Okay. And that gave me a minute for this to dry down. I'm just going to go kind of a neutral, not much there color uh, for the in-between type of stuff. Kind of a brownish, grayish, and it's picking up some of the blue as I go, which is okay. But up in between the eyes, almost give a little pinkish look to it. Just, just so we're establishing there's a fat little body there. Okay. You know what it's time for again? It's time for paint to dry. So I'm going to put paint drying right here. I guess I can't put it on top of that part. I'm put it on top of this part. <laughs> and I'm going to have to turn off your video for a few minutes so that your paint can dry. And then we will return. Okay. It's been five or ten minutes. And though this is not completely dry, it's dry enough to work on. Take off the paint drying sign. And the tail is very dry and the eyes are very dry. That's important. That's where I want to go next. So at this point, we're going to take up the pen because most things from here on out are going to be black. And it's easier to use a pen than to try and paint very fine detail with black with a watercolor. So first we're going to put the uh, eye, what did I decide they were, not iris, the pupils in. They're big compared to the rest of the eye and they go right down the edge. Just an oval there. that. Tails on these critters are very interesting. They're actually a little pointed on the ends, so we'll give them some little points. They're divided into usually seven sections. The sections are a little bigger towards the middle and a little smaller towards the end. So we're going to start down here, putting some lines in. One, two, three. I'm starting to get a little bit bigger. Four. Now I've just got to divide up here for five, six, seven. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I do two, two lines, that'll do it. I'm going to go back and thicken these lines and put a little ball on each end and a thicker line in between. The ball actually goes outside because these sections are thinner in the middle than they are at the joints. So it forces me to make a, a thick line and it forces the blue to be thinner than the joint. As I'm getting up towards the main body here, I'm also getting heavier with those lines. I'm going to do a little bit of outlining first down the eyes, trying to get them as much equal shapes to each other as I possibly can. And now the nose, where we painted without touching them, we can make it actually fill in in between there so that it touches them. We can outline the little armor pieces and we can fix any lack of symmetry that we might have had when we painted them because the ink lines don't have to go exactly the same place as the other lines did. We're going to put the legs in now before we go to the distraction of the wings. The first legs start almost right behind the eyeball, here and here on what I would call the shoulders. They're going to come forward at an angle, test the elbow, and then they're going to turn, and then there's just a little dash for a hand or a foot at the end. I think of these as hands because it's more up here where they feed themselves. The section from the elbow to the shoulder is going to be a little bit heavier, so we can give it some more ink thickness, and maybe even almost a little triangular at the shoulder that it gets quite thick there. The second leg comes out not too far behind that. We'll say here and here. It's going to overlap the wing a little bit, and then it also has an elbow and a Another section and a foot, and the foot can go any direction. And we're also going to make this upper section heavier. That will also help to differentiate it from the rest of what's going on in the wing. The last two legs start farther down here, about where the wing is coming out there and there. So in the beginning, they overlap the wing, and then they don't. And then they turn at a knee and a foot. So a little long, big section, short little section, and then a little foot. And once again, we make this first section thicker and heavier. And of the three, this could be the thickest and heaviest. I don't know that much about dragonflies, but just from studying the pictures, it looks like those back legs are for hanging on to things. The front ones are for maybe eating with, and the in-between ones can help either the front or the back, whichever. Okay, I'm just going to give a, a light line now indicating where that body is. There we go. The, uh, the tail, as you can see, and we were successful in making it lighter here and darker here. Oftentimes the tails have patterns and color changes and all kinds of things going on. If you look at pictures on the internet, you might find some things that you enjoy. We're just going to put a little triangle in each one to make it interesting. I've seen some dragonflies like this. A lot of them have a wonderful mixture of greens and blues and blacks in their tail. Okay, so now on to the wings. Now, I'm gonna bring up my picture that I did earlier. So the wing has an intense amount of inking. And what I've been learning, especially as I went through this one here, is that it's gonna be a lot easier to do if we sort of go with a pattern. Uh, and one of the pattern elements I'm gonna call a ladder. 
So we're going to put a ladder along the top edge of this wing. And all the way across there and all the way across there. Those are the sides of the ladder and there's little rungs on the ladder. I'll try to have them actually go from one edge to another, but I usually get moving too fast and miss some of them. And I just have to remember that in the end, there's so much inking that ends up on these wings that a little miss is not a bad thing. Now, like when I drew them, I want to go back and do the other side right away so that it's as much alike as possible. Much can be forgiven of inaccuracy if the symmetry is there from one side to the other. So you can see about how big those little boxes are that are the rungs in, in the ladder. Now, where it came down in the front of the heart here, we're going to do a heavier section that's deeper than where the ladder was because we're going to have a second ladder section that comes out from there and actually within that, a third one for part of that distance. Okay, now as I go to put rungs in this other ladder, I want to make sure they're not in the same place as the rungs that I did above them. I don't want to look like the one extends into the other, kind of like bricks on a wall. Have the rungs below in the opposite location than that one. Now that center ladder is going to get extra darkening on both sides of it. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing over here, and like that, and like that. Put your ladder rungs in. Making sure they don't line up. And then accentuate that center ladder. Second half of the wing, we are going to add a second ladder, but not a third. So it's just completely parallel to the first one. And once again, the rungs should not line up. Sometimes once in a while, one accidentally will, but that's okay. Second one over here. They start to line up, you just make one shorter and one longer and make it work from there. Okay, we're going to skip down to the bottom wings because they have the same type of situation. And I feel like I have a little too much curve in the bottom wing, so I'm going to use my ladder time to actually straighten that out a little bit. There and here. So I'll put the ladder on the outside this time in order to help correct the um, difference there. Now this one will also have a heavy section in the middle, but it doesn't have a heart shape. You just have to go to the middle and do a heavy one on each one. Okay, then we can fill in the ladders. Fill in the ladder on this side. Now both the top and the bottom wing also will have a little extra inking, a little heaviness around these leading corners. So we'll do it like that, like that, like that. It doesn't have to be fancy, just, just extra ink. Okay, now we're going to start worrying, walking, working on what I call the interior ladders. We'll do the bottom one first. It's going to start here, and it's going to curve down and end up here. Maybe it's easier to start down here at the bottom and head up towards that leg. So there's one ladder. And fill that in. Then we'll do another one here. Coming up to almost the same point. These can get skinnier as they go up and be fatter at the bottom, that's okay. And one more, kind of halfway what's left. Okay. 
So same thing over here. One layer that goes here all the way to the top, wider at the bottom. halfway of whatever's left. Okay. Now let's do some on the top. I have such a strong heart shape in there, it's going to be I'm going to have to kind of cling to this line to start with. But uh, we'll start down here and bring it in, make it a ladder, fill it in. Second one comes right up to the cling to that top one at the near the body, and one more in the middle of whatever's left. Okay, same thing on this side. See how you can see those greens and blues and yellows through the wing, even though we put that little muting blue on there, it still gives you a transparent wing. Okay, so we've got the basic structure going now. Now the trick is we have to fill in all these empty spaces with more little openings, but in nature they're no longer little squares like in the ladders. So I came up with a method that helps me to make somewhat more random shapes. So any place I see a curve like this, I'm going to put a smile underneath it. Smile, 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 smile. This side, smile, smile, smile. Three more, one, four more, two, three, four. So that'll be one area. Then I want to break up these areas in here. And you know what I'm just going to do? I'm just going to do a zigzag. I'm going to start at the edge of the smile. I'm just going to zig and zag to fill in going back towards the body till it gets fairly small. Sometimes they have to be pretty zig big zigs and zags, and sometimes they're little bitty zigs and zags. And then I've got a little bit of room left down here, I'm just going to sort of triangle that off. So zigzags, and a little bit of close that triangle. So what I'm making is division spots that are small pieces uh, and therefore more manageable to put tiny little marks into. Here's a, a section that doesn't have anything. I'm just going to put zigzags in it. And let's see, this one needs something to close it off. So any place we're seeing too big of an open section, we'll fill in with zigzags or triangles of some sort. And it doesn't matter that they're all different. We sort of want them to be all different. And just go straight over those legs. Don't worry about them. Don't think about them. Okay. Now, you could potentially just say, there we go, it's done. <laughs> or, if you haven't totally run out of patience with me yet, you could go a little bit farther. You know what, then we're going to take a little break from that inking, because I realized we didn't ink the edges of the tail. And it's good to take a break. Sometimes when we said these were skinnier, you can actually kind of make them bow inward if you want to. It doesn't matter if your paint didn't bow inward. People will believe the ink. They'll think the paint going outside the ink is just sort of your artistic expression. See how that, that looks now like segments? 
Okay, so now we need to start filling in all these little shapes that we've created in the wings. And you notice these are all very straight lines that I've done so far. This time I'm going to use wiggly lines. Here's a shape I want to fill in. I'm going to put in sort of a V shape, upside down V shape that splits it in three. And then I'm going to call this a one ladder, and this a ladder going a different direction, and this a ladder going a different direction too. Now some of those semi-rectangular things that were made there are too big. So I'm going to split them in half. And once again, putting the splits different places. That's about enough for me. So any place I see a triangle, I can either cut it in half and put some ladders in and then split up the pieces. And I'm, I'm leaving these straight ladders the way they were. And once again, my initial V shape is wobbly just because I don't want the overall pattern to be too precise. And right now it's pretty precise. So wiggly V shape, right side up or upside down. Make that into a ladder. Then the area to the left of it, the area to the right of it, become ladders, but with the ladder steps going different directions. And if a space is small, I can just divide it in two. These are pretty small, so I can almost do them as singles. Now here's a big one. So here I'm going to use the wiggly V shape, but it's upside down this time. And some ladders going different angles. If, if you do one triangle with ladders going one direction, try and do the next one with them going the opposite direction. That's why I zigzagged, just so we could switch off. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Oop, there's a little section that didn't get any zigzag. Give it some zigzag. It's almost too small to do much of anything with. It's almost like I'm just scribbling in that one. Okay, but here we are. We've got some real ones to fill in. So let's, let's make it. V shape, fill in some ladders, and split up little pieces. Wiggly V shape, ladder, ladder, fill in the pieces. Wiggly V shape, ladders this way, ladders that way, break them up. Wiggly V shape, Ladders, ladders. You're going to be dreaming about ladders after all this. Now, this is a tough one down here. I'm going to put a little zigzag in first and then go opposite directions with my ladders and then break them up. Okay, so when we've got a row of zigzag like this, that's the easy way. Do this one that direction, this one this direction. Leaning to the left, leaning to the right, leaning to the left, leaning to the right, and then come back in and Break them up. Okay, one wing done. That was very quick and it looks good. So you're gonna repeat the same type of thing for the other wings. I'm not gonna make you watch me do it, but I'm going to pause for a little bit, finish that off, and then show you the finished product. So we'll put up the paint drying sign even though it's not paint drying. Okay, that wasn't really paint drying. That was me sitting in a chair and inking for five or 10 minutes so you didn't have to be bored by watching me ink and ink and ink. The things to remember as you ink are, be very careful of those ladders. Do not run over the ladders. Um, the other thing is you're just trying to get little marks in there in between the ladders that make it look like a Gosh, I want to say a spider web, but it's not regular enough for a spider web. A, uh, a spider who's not very good at building webs is what you want it to look like. The other thing is once you've finished like this, you can look and see, do you want to darken up some of these 
places that are supposed to be emphasized with the black ink so they really stand out against all that itty bitty inking. Um, and you want to look at your itty bitty inking too and see if there's any place that needs a little more ink than it has right now. You've managed to fill in all the, the spaces, but are they um, equally dense? I guess is the word that I'm after. Equally dense with ink. It's a little tricky because this has blue behind it, so it looks different there. But can I look at this and see one section that doesn't seem to have enough? I think maybe this little section right here, which is not surprising. It's the last one I did and I was getting tired of it. Um, here's what you can do. Just put in some little dashes and dots that make it look a little bit denser. Be careful, don't go in your ladders. Now that I've done that, I can see I could use a little bit here. Now look particularly around the edges. I tend to start cheating around the edges and not putting enough little marks in. That one looks pretty good, that one looks pretty good. Okay, I'm relatively happy with this little fellow. If you remember when we started, I said I was going to draw him on a 8 by 10 piece of paper in an attempt to end up with a 5 by 7 painting. So I have a little piece of cardboard here with a 5 by 7 come up, cut out of it. And uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I could get the... I could get the wings on, but not all of his tail. I can get the tail on, but not all of his wings. I could do like I did on that one and get one wing more nicely and the other wing farther away. So when you're making a decision like this, one of your deciding points is, is there one part of the painting that I don't like? I'm not crazy about this little section up here. It doesn't match this one very well. So I could choose to sacrifice it and the painting about like that which would be interesting because it would put his big eyeballs up here in a corner uh, which is a good place compositionally speaking the other thing that i can do is give up on the five by seven and say well how does it look as an eight by ten should i just keep the whole thing and my conclusion is i think i might want to keep the whole thing I may want to do a little bit of something to try and make those two wings match more. This one is so fat on the end, and this one is less fat. I'm just going to cheat and add another little ladder there. No one will ever know. Now it looks a little bit more the same. And you know what I can do? I can make this three ladders here by cutting this one in half. It violates my rule of having the uh, cross hatches in the same place, but it looks much more the same now. I'm also feeling like <clears throat> these little heart things dip down too low, so I'm going to actually smooth that out a little bit, bring this line up. There. I'm much happier with that. You know what you do when you're happy with the painting? You sign it. I always sign my paintings with the hinky cattle brand, the Rocking O. We do not put it on cattle anymore, so I use it on my paintings. Make sure that you write somewhere maybe on the back of the painting when it was that you painted this because you will want to look back later and see how much you've grown over time and gotten better. So last thing I want to say, as always, is thank you for painting with me today. Please like or follow or subscribe here or on Facebook, whatever works for you. I'm Nan Hanky Texas Hill Country Art. On Facebook and on Instagram, I'm just Texas Hill Country Art, but you can also search for Nan Hanky and find me. Um, post your art. I want to see what you're doing with this stuff that I'm teaching here. In the meantime, enjoy. Paint every day if you can. Bye.